All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about U substitution. And so U substitution is a method for integration that we use when we are integrating composite functions. And so you can sort of think of it as the reverse of the chain rule for derivatives, which is a rule that we used when we were taking derivatives of composite functions. And so if you recall, this right here is the chain rule. When we have the derivative of some outside function f of x with an inside function g of x, the derivative of this composite function is equal to the derivative of the outside function with the same inside function times the derivative of the inside function. And so if we were to reverse this process by integrating our derivative here, we would have that the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx would be equal to f of g of x plus c. Right, and so all that's happening here is we are reversing the chain rule where we are taking that derivative and integrating it to get back our original function, which in this case we would call the antiderivative of this function. And so we can rewrite this to reflect that, that we're working with an antiderivative by having that the integral of some function of g of x times the derivative of g of x dx, that would be equal to the antiderivative of f of g of x plus c. And so if we replace our previous statement with this new statement, we then have the rule for how to integrate a composite function. And so to make this process simpler or easier to do, we use the method of u substitution to actually integrate a composite function by bringing in another variable of u. And so what we're going to do is we're going to let this variable u be equal to that inside function g of x. So this will be equal to g of x. And then if we take the derivative of u with respect to x, we will have that du dx is equal to g prime of x. And then if we multiply both sides by dx, then we'll have that du is equal to g prime of x dx. And so what we do with u and du is we replace what they're equal to in this integral with their u counterparts. So what we're going to do is replace g of x with u, because that's what we set u equal to, and we'll replace g prime of x dx with du. And so what we'll have is the integral of f of u du, right? So we replace g of x with u, so we have f of u, and then we replace g prime of x dx with du, and now we have f of u du, and the integral of that would be equal to the antiderivative of u plus c. And now we could go back in at the end and replace u with g of x again. And so this is where the process of u substitution comes from. In order to make the process of integrating a composite function easier, we choose a part of our integrand to be equal to u, and then take the derivative of u, solve for du, and then replace the parts in our integral in terms of u. And so when you use u sub, when you actually integrate, you should only be integrating with respect to u. There should be no variables of x anywhere in the integrand anymore. Our x variables will come back into play after we have integrated once we have our antiderivative, which is then when we would replace u with what we set it equal to in terms of x. And so while this might seem a little confusing right now, it's going to make a lot more sense with an example problem. And so let's take a look at our first example right now. And so here's our first example. We have the integral of 2x times the quantity x squared plus 1 to the 20th power dx. And we need to use u substitution to solve this indefinite integral because we have a composite function within our integrand, right? We have x squared plus 1 to the power of 20. And this would be pretty difficult to integrate with our currently known methods. Previously, if we had a quantity that was taken to a power, we would expand that quantity so that we could integrate each term individually. But we're not going to be able to do that in this case unless you want to spend a ton of time expanding a quantity to the power of 20. So instead, u substitution is going to allow us to do this a lot faster and a lot easier. And so probably the hardest part of using u substitution is figuring out what part of your function in your integrand or in your integral are you gonna be setting equal to u. And most of the time, if you can identify your composite function, which in this case would be this quantity to the 20th power, usually you're going to wanna to set u to be that function that is on the inside of your composite function. Now that might not always be the case, 
but that's going to be a good starting point for what you should set u equal to. But let's try that for this example here. If we set u equal to x squared plus one, the first thing we're going to want to do is then take the derivative of what we set u equal to with respect to x. So we're going to have du dx is equal to the derivative of x squared plus one with respect to x. And so the derivative of x squared is going to be two x, right? We multiply the two down and subtract one from the exponent. And then the derivative of one is zero because one is just a constant. And so now what we wanna do is solve for du. And so if we do that, du will be equal to two x times dx, right? We just multiplied both sides of this equation by dx. And so now notice what happened when we took the derivative of u and solved for du. Do you see a part in this integral where we have two x dx? Well, we have a two x right here and a dx right here. And so what we can do is replace two x and dx with du and then replace x squared plus one with u, right? That's what we set u equal to. And so what we'll have is that this integral is equal to the integral of u to the power of 20 du, right? And so just to make sure that you're following, just to make sure that this makes sense, we replaced x squared plus one with u. That is the first step that we took. We set u equal to this function, x squared plus one, and then we took the derivative of it and solved for du. And we can find that derivative inside our integral. And so we can replace our derivative with du and now we just have an integral that is in terms of u. That is the whole idea here, to get a simpler integral in terms of u with no x's to be seen. We'll bring x back in after we integrate this to get our final answer. And so if we do integrate this function, this will be equal to u to the power of 21 divided by 21 plus c. Right, we used the power rule for integration on u to the 20th power. We added one to 20 to get 21 and then divided by 21. And so then now that we have integrated, it's time to substitute back what we set u equal to, which was x squared plus one. And so our answer here will be equal to x squared plus one to the power of 21 divided by 21 plus c. And that would be our final answer. Right, we set u equal to x squared plus one, and so if we plug that back in at the end, we have that whole quantity, x squared plus one, to the 21st power, and we leave everything else the same that we found when we integrated u to the power of 20. And so if you're not convinced, if you're not sure if this is really the right answer to this integral, just remember that when you integrate something, you are finding the function, or the antiderivative, whose derivative is found in that integral. And so if we were to take the derivative of this function, if we get an answer that looks like what is in our integral, then we know that our answer is correct. And so if we quickly check, if we take the derivative d dx of x squared plus one to the 21st power divided by 21 plus c, what will we have? Well, we're gonna have to use the chain rule. We'll start by taking the derivative of the outside function, which is this quantity to the 21st power and then we'll take the derivative of the inside function, x squared plus one. And so this would be equal to 21 times x squared plus one to the 20th power times the derivative of the inside function, which would just be two x. And then we'll still divide by 21 like we had right here. And so all we did was take the derivative of this outside function, which was this quantity to the 21st power by multiplying the 21 down and then subtracting one from the exponent and then we multiplied by the derivative of that inside function, which we found that derivative of x squared plus one was two x earlier. And so that was pretty easy to just multiply by that derivative. And then don't forget that when you take the derivative of a constant c, that's just going to be zero. So we don't need to really worry about that. But then what we'll notice with our answer here is that these 21s will cancel out. And what we'll be left with is two x times x squared plus one to the power of 20. And so if we compare this to what was in our integral, we have the same function. And so we know that this u substitution process worked to find the antiderivative of the function in our integral. And so while maybe I made that seem a little easy with how we picked our function for u, it might not always be clear to you what you need to set equal to u. And that's going to come with practice. The more example problems you do, the easier that will become. But the bottom line, the thing that you wanna be thinking about when choosing a part of your function to be equal to you is ask yourself, do I see a function and its derivative? Because look what happened here. We set u equal to x squared plus one, and then we're going to have to take the derivative of that, and that needs to be somewhere in our integral so that we can replace it 
with du. And so when you set something equal to u, you want to make sure that its derivative is somewhere in this integral, right? And so if you weren't sure when first looking at this problem, what to set equal to u, just go piece by piece and see what you know the derivative of. And you know the derivative of 2x is just going to be 2. Well, I don't really see another 2 anywhere in this problem. But if we choose x squared plus 1, you know that the derivative of x squared is 2x. And look at that. It's right there. And so that means that setting x squared plus 1 equal to u is a good choice. All right, so now let's look at a different example. All right, so for our next example, we have the integral of the square root of 3y plus 1 dy. And so in this case, we are working in terms of y. That's not going to change our process of u substitution. But just remember that when we take our derivative, we're going to be taking the derivative with respect to y, not x, because our integral is defined with y. And so with this example, what I want you to see is that when you set a value equal to u, the derivative is not always going to match up nicely with what you find in your integral. And so you're going to have to compensate for that or make some adjustments. And so let me show you what I mean. In this integral, we really only have one choice for what we're going to set u equal to, right? Our composite function here is the square root of 3y plus 1. So let's just set what the inside function is equal to u. And so we'll have u equal to 3y plus 1. And so if we take the derivative of that, we'll have du dy, and that will be equal to 3, right? The derivative of a variable to the first power is just going to be equal to the constant being multiplied by it. So that's 3. And the derivative of 1 is just going to be 0 because 1 is a constant. And so if we solve for du, we'll have that du is equal to 3 dy. And now this is the part where you want to look at your integral to see if you can find a 3 dy or whatever du is equal to. And so in this case, I don't really see a 3 anywhere, right? We have a 3y here, but that's what we said equal to u. So that's off limits. We don't want to be looking at that part of the function. And so all I see in here besides this composite function is dy. And so that is what we're going to want to replace du with. And so if we isolate dy here by dividing both sides by 3, we'll have du divided by 3 is equal to dy. And so now we can replace dy in this integral with du divided by 3. And so let's do that. Let's replace 3y plus 1 with u, which is what we set it equal to and replace dy with du divided by 3. So we'll have that this is equal to the integral of the square root of u times du divided by 3. And so what we can do here is pull this 1 third out to the front of our integral. So this will be equal to 1 third times the integral of the square root of u du. And remember that a square root function can be rewritten with the 1 half power. And so we would have that this is equal to 1 third times the integral of u to the 1 half power du. And so now we can integrate our function with respect to u. And this will be equal to 1 third times u to the power of 1 half plus 1 divided by 1 half plus 1 plus c. And 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. And so we'll have a 3 halves power here and also 3 halves in the denominator. So I'll have 3 halves and 3 halves. And so then we can find the final answer here by remembering that when you divide by a fraction, you're just multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So we would multiply this by 2 thirds. And then we would also want to replace u with what we set it equal to. And so our final answer will be that this is equal to 1 third times 2 thirds times 3y plus 1 to the 3 halves power plus c. And then we can multiply our fractions here together. We'll have 1 times 2 is 2, and 3 times 3 is 9. And so we'll have 2 ninths in front of our function here. And so this would be the final answer to our integral. Let's look at one more example for this video. All right, so for our last example, we have the integral of 2x squared times sine of 4x cubed plus 1 dx. And so the first thing that we want to do here, if we want to solve this integral, is figure out what we're going to set u equal to. And remember that phrase, do you see a function and its derivative? And if you see that function, that's what you're going to want to set u equal to. And so I see we have a term of 2x squared, and I also see we have 4x cubed plus 1. Now we have this sine function, but we know that the derivative of sine is cosine, and I don't see cosine anywhere in here. And so it's definitely not going to make sense to make sine equal to u which I don't even know how you would do that because sine is the outside function of a composite function 
where the inside function is 4x cubed plus 1. So we know sine is not going to be equal to u. So it's either going to be this 2x squared or 4x cubed plus 1. And we know that the derivative of a cubed function, like 4x cubed, is going to be a squared function, right? So if we let u equal 4x cubed plus 1, the derivative du dx would be equal to 12x squared, right? We multiply 3 by 4 to get 12, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent to get x squared. And so now, if we solve for du, we'll have du is equal to 12x squared dx. And now, if we wanted to substitute du into our integral, we have an x squared that can be replaced, right? Because the idea here is that when we use u substitution, we want to eliminate all x's from our integral. We don't want to have any x's left over. We want it to be completely in terms of u so that we can integrate and then substitute x back in. But now notice in this case that this isn't an exact matchup with what is in here. We have 12x squared dx, but in our integral we have 2x squared dx. And so we have a little bit of an inconsistency because we have 2 in our integral but 12 in our du term. But that's not a problem because constant multiples are not terms of x. And so we have some wiggle room there to manipulate our constant multiples. So you have two different options here. And one of these you will probably prefer a lot more than the other. And that is just every time you get to this step, solve for dx and plug in what dx is equal to right into your integral. And so we could solve for dx by dividing both sides by 12x squared. And we'd have du divided by 12x squared is equal to dx. And so then you could replace dx in your integral with du divided by 12x squared. And then you would see that your x squareds would cancel out. And so that's one way you could do it. But the other way that I like to do it is to try to get what is on this side of your du equation to look exactly like what is in your integral, right? So here we have 2x squared dx, but we have 12x squared dx over here. I want it to be 2x squared dx. So what I could do is divide both sides by 6 because 12 divided by 6 is 2. And so then we'd have that 1 sixth du is equal to 2x squared dx. And so then we could replace this 2x squared dx right here, 2x squared dx with 1 sixth du. And so it's totally up to you which way you want to do this, whether you want to just divide everything over and just replace dx with all of that, or if you want to be a little bit more strategic and try to get this to look exactly like what is in your integral and have a bit of an easier substitution. So either way, totally up to you. You just have to pick a method that you prefer to do. But then if we go ahead and substitute u in as well as du, and I'm going to use this method right here, this will be equal to the integral of sine of u times 1 sixth du. Right, so we replaced 4x cubed plus 1 with u, that's what we set it equal to, and then I found over here that 2x squared dx is equal to 1 sixth du, and so we replaced those terms with 1 sixth du. And just to show you what would happen if you used this method really quick, I'll write it in blue here because I'm not going to keep it here long, but you would have that this is equal to the integral of 2x squared times sine of u times du divided by 12x squared, right? So we replace dx with what it was equal to here, and then you would see that this x squared and this x squared would cancel, and that this 2 and this 12 would reduce to 1 sixth. So either way, you're going to get the same integral. It's just two different ways of doing it, like I said. Okay, but that's how you would have done that if you used the other method. And so if we were to go through and integrate this, I'll pull this 1 sixth to the outside, and this will be equal to 1 sixth times the integral of sine u. And we know that the integral of sine is negative cosine. So we'll have negative cosine of u. And then we'll have plus c. All right, and so now that we have integrated, our last step is to substitute back what we set u equal to, which was 4x cubed plus 1. And so this will be equal to negative 1 sixth times cosine of 4x cubed plus 1. And then we'll have plus c. Right, and so that is the final answer to this integral. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson on u substitution. If you wanna see some more example problems, I'll have an examples video linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.